Hey everyone, Crisis here. Metal Gear Solid stands alongside The Legend of Zelda and the Arkham games as perhaps my favorite gaming series of all time. With some of my first videos to pop off being Metal Gear Solid related, and with the saga having made a bit of a comeback lately, I figured I'd use my more updated and refined research and presentation, analyzing the lore of the series, and present you all with the definitive Metal Gear ranking from weakest to strongest. At least for the sake of comprehensiveness, I will be including the likes of Portable Ops and Metal Gear Rising, as they were listed as canon spin-offs on the latest version of the timeline from the new Master Collection. So look for to seeing those characters once we begin. Just so you know, this video as well as all my rankings are broken into tiers, with the metric being that the characters in a tier above another would win a fight at least 6 out of 10 times compared to those below them. With all that said, let's begin this breakdown. Starting off, maybe somewhat shockingly, we have most of the Cobra unit from Metal Gear Solid 3. Now, relax, let me explain. From the weakest up, the pain was stated to be the worst shot in the unit according to the official and Kojima-endorsed Metal Gear Solid 3 novel, with a rusty, naked snake managing to put him down with his standard weapons. The Fury wields the strongest flamethrower ever according to guidebooks taking into account the series up to MGS2, so likely more powerful than Snake's pistol and grenades. The End was the greatest sniper of all time until his death, so in his typical battleground he would undo the Fury, whose suit was torn open by Snake's armaments. The Fear on the other hand is an invisible master of ambushes and crossbows, who managed to initially sneak up on and poison the same Snake that beat the End. Even if his photosynthetic powers managed to nullify the poison, which would just be an assumption, it's likely that the fear would just keep tagging him over and over in a similar manner as Snake. Volgan, meanwhile, is fairly immune to conventional weapons which the Cobras rely on, and while not being that great of a survivalist, the fact that he was able to pummel and press Naked Snake after he'd adapted and become stronger as he beat the Cobras, shaking off his rust from before the game, it makes it most probable that Volgan would just shield himself from any of the Cobras' attacks and either fry them with lightning or just break their necks. The boss, of course, being the greatest soldier ever up to that point, would be superior to her unit and was able to floor Volgan on screen with a single attack. Kojima also stated that the final bosses of each of his games are the most powerful, so it all lines up. Keep in mind that these guys surpassed literally every other fighter from the beginning of time up to the 1960s, and they're pretty much at the bottom of the list. Why that's the case should become apparent with the existence of characters like Gene, a super soldier who was created to be and stated to have enhanced versions of all the boss's qualities, according to the official MGS4 database and pretty much the game itself. His subordinates would as well be in the same tier, as they each pressure the now christened Big Boss, who managed to outright defeat the boss in less than 10 minutes after running a gauntlet against the Cobras, a precursor to Metal Gear, and being tortured and shot. I have another video going into great detail about just the power scaling of MGS3 alone that you can check out. But to briefly summarize, there's no evidence that the boss held back against Naked Snake. It's stated outright that Naked Snake beat her and is her superior by the end of the game. Even if she was holding back to some unquantifiable degree, Snake would be conflicting himself and fatigued to a far greater degree compared to the boss who pretty much did nothing while Snake was running around fighting boss fights for days straight, on a mission that he wasn't even medically cleared to undergo after prior injuries. Anyway, a young Grey Fox and Python lose too, but pressure Big Boss in their fights. With Python having been trained to outright counter Big Boss after everyone in the Black Ops world knows he killed the boss. In a tier just slightly above them, we'd see the Skull Unit and Quiet from MGS5. This being based on the fact that Kaz, Big Boss's right-hand man, Master of Warfare, told Venom Snake, who Kaz thinks is Big Boss at the time, to not even try to fight the Skulls. Kaz also went blow for blow against Big Boss during Peace Walker, as observed by Paz, so he'd be totally aware of what Big Boss could do. The official MGS Twitter account also supports this, stating that the Skulls are more dangerous than anything Snake so far encountered. Quiet, of course, would be above the Skulls, especially considering the MGS5 novel, which states she actually trains after getting her powers and has similar sneaking skills as Venom Snake. Higher yet on the list, we're starting to get into the more well-known super soldiers of the series. Kaz, like I mentioned, was able to go even in a strictly hand-to-hand -hand fight against Peace Walker era Big Boss, while neither of them tried to kill one another. He's also stated as second only to Big Boss during that same time frame and specializes in all forms of warfare. So considering all of what Big Boss was able to accomplish, Kaz would, in all likelihood, beat the boss and 
even quiet in a fight, as crazy as that sounds. We then have the MGS5 variants of both Big Boss himself and his doppelganger, Venom Snake. At the very least, they're both equal, considering the fact that Venom Snake has all of Big Boss's knowledge and experiences, and was even deemed as a second Big Boss in the words of the first. However, considering the fact that Venom can beat the skulls who Kaz told him, under the assumption he was talking to the real Big Boss, not to even try to fight, he beat a Metal Gear stated far stronger than the ones Big Boss faced in Peace Walker, and his even crazier high-tech cyborg arm-assisted arsenal. Based on this, I do hold Venom Snake just slightly above Big Boss in terms of who it win. With Grey Fox and Solid Snake at the time of the 8-bit Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake being greater than both Venom and a younger Big Boss. Grey Fox, since last seen as Null in Portable Ops, would have trained under Big Boss as is required in the Foxhound military unit. To the point that, Solid Snake, after having already beaten Venom Snake, said that Fox was the best mercenary. Period. A lot of people might assume that Solid Snake's beating of Venom in the first and severely retconned Metal Gear 1 is a bit lackluster in the face of Venom's advanced age. However, he was already 54 by the time of MGS5, being 63 when Solid Snake beat him. But it is worth keeping in mind that Solid Snake was heavily injured himself before defeating Venom Snake on top of being a relatively rookie soldier and nowhere near as strong as he'd become later in the series. We also know, per the MGS5 piggyback strategy guide, wholly endorsed by the series creators, that Big Boss sought to become ever stronger leading into the 8-bit games, starting his Goku arc. This is a sci-fi series where drugs can boost your senses and reaction time, with many other ways of heightening one's strength in the series. So a likely millionaire leader of military nations could certainly bypass his wing age at a point. Not to mention that he'd be his most experienced, with combat being stated as the best training in the series. So I think it's fair to say that Solid Snake and Grey Fox would scale above the younger versions of Big Boss and Venom Snake and any foes they themselves defeated. As far as the bosses of the 8-bit games, many of them simply get stomped by a pretty novice Solid Snake. The legendary Night Fright, however, managed to put up a grueling fight against Snake even after he beat Venom Snake while injured in the prior game. Bloody Brad was a cyborg developed by the same engineer who built a Metal Gear surpassing the likes of Peace Walker and ST-84 when accounting for the series' lore in its entirety. Who was too durable for any of Snake's weapons sans his rocket launcher? Being generous to Big Boss, as I'll describe later on, Brad would be in a similar tier as the boss's Metal Gear 2 self, seeing as Snake's techniques were more or less useless against Bloody Brad. It's also impressive considering that Cyborg, weaker than the Metal Gear of the time, was too much for Snake at that point, but later on Solid Snake could beat up Grey Fox who could withstand a much stronger Metal Gear completely detonating on top of him, this not at all injuring Fox. Meanwhile, Snake can just uppercut Grey Fox into a minefield. So there is actually a big gap between the first two 8-bit games in terms of overall strength. Regardless, Running Man from Metal Gear 2 is the self-proclaimed fastest mercenary around, with his Metal Gear Acid card confirming as much. On the surface level, this would be pretty impressive, seeing as Ocelot could react to lightning and Snake was avoiding lasers in Metal Gear 1, that being the speed of light. Sadly though, Snake still keeps up with Running Man just fine and is able to put him down. He is a fraud. With all that being said, after losing most of his weapons, Solid Snake was told that his techniques would be useless against Metal Gear 2 Big Boss, who is brandishing a gun of his own. If this means that he's just physically too strong for Solid Snake, then he'd be a tier above the prior mentioned fighters. However, I find it likely that if Snake still had his arsenal, he'd make quick work of his father, considering he still beat him with a makeshift flamethrower. With this fight placing Solid Snake as the new benchmark going forward, we ease into the series 2000s. Here we have the Foxhound unit as seen in MGS1, with Ocelot at the bottom. Now up until this point, Ocelot was a rival to Big Boss, likely a near-equal combatant, with secondary material calling him the greatest foe Solid Snake has ever faced. Ocelot would have had to have severely trained as a part of Foxhound requirements, which is a funny thought to imagine, but Sniper Wolf is referred to as a better shot than Ocelot, and when selecting her costume for Quiet in MGS5, it's heavily implied that Wolf is superior to her, as Quiet cosplaying as Wolf only makes her the next best thing. Gray Fox and Olga in her exoskeleton as seen in MGS2 would be above them. Olga, funnily enough, is described as putting up a fight against Snake, could blitz Raiden multiple times, and the new Master Collection Master Book states she has abilities 
abilities to rival Gray Fox, which she showcased here and again. More importantly, this enhanced Fox with all of his potential unlocked, swapped hands with Solid Snake, this time wearing a durability amplifying sneaking suit compared to when he beat Venom Snake and Big Boss. He also did train before the events of Shadow Moses if the player undergoes the VR mode of MGS1, with Colonel Campbell famously stating that Snake is at least relative to his MSX self. The official MGS vs. Battle website states that both Gray Fox and Sniper Wolf pushed Snake to his limits. However, Snake had undergone a torture session between fighting Fox and Wolf, so he would be severely worse for wear against Wolf. Also, let's be real, Sniper Wolf isn't tagging Fox, at least in like a cage match. The description of the official MGS comic, which has also been featured on almost every collection, and was referred to as a valid version of the story by Kojima, states that Vulcan Raven is the greatest adversary Snake's ever faced, even after his fights with Ocelot and Gray Fox. Their bout was also heavily implied to have required Snake to go all out, just as he did against Fox and Wolf, so maybe Raven could have done some damage to Rex too. Psycho Mantis in MGS1 would likely bully the rest of Foxhound just per his mental powers alone. However, Liquid under the guise of Cos Miller considered him weak, which is in line with Snake's besting of Mantis via some questionable fourth wall level means. The man on fire from MGS5 would be around here if we assume that Mantis didn't undergo some kind of telepathic training between games, seeing as the man on fire literally can't even move without Mantis's influence and should just roughly scale to his level of power. No one in MGS5 could really physically contend with him after all, just break his connection to Mantis or use his Pokemon type dis advantage to water. Keep in mind that Mantis could like create high tier natural disasters based on the lore. In the next tier, we start with Liquid Snake. While many might argue that Liquid is actually stronger than Solid Snake, the feats just don't support that. Solid Snake with none of his equipment managed to outdo Liquid in a hand-to-hand -hand fight, while he also refrained from using his signature martial arts style after fighting all the bosses and being literally tortured. All this while also being emotionally impaired, and he just outskilled and overpowered Liquid blatantly. While Liquid did survive this fight, he lost all the same. And as far as we know, he doesn't even have any weapons on hand. Solid as Snake from MGS2 would be above Liquid, boasting the exact genes of Big Boss while also having his abilities boosted by the greatest exoskeleton in the series, even including Rising. Sadly, he's capped by Raiden, who at best represents an MGS1 Snake level fighter, with the entire events of MGS2 being a recreation of Solid 1. Raiden having beaten not only AI versions of the first game's enemies, but also the Dead Cell unit who were placed as stand-ins for Foxhound by a world-controlling artificial intelligence. That being said, MGS1 Snake would be right next to this version of Raiden for the same reasons. Now, this might sound a little goofy, but follow along. By the time of MGS4, the SOP system would connect soldiers to the Patriot AI and amplify their fighting abilities even beyond what VR was capable of. The same VR that could recreate the events of Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear 2, and MGS1, which was the foundational training for Raiden, and the literal fodder of MGS4 would be above that level. So it's possible that the likes of Rat Patrol, especially Meryl and Johnny by the end of MGS4, would at least be on the same tier as MGS1 level soldiers. Seeing as they squad wipe members of Liquid Ocelot's elite guard while injured. Keep in mind that fewer of these soldiers managed to overpower MGS4 Raiden while he was missing his arms, sure, but it's still a crazy comparison. Take it or leave it, I guess. Moving along, we have Solid Snake by the time of MGS2. While there are some lines to suggest his accelerated aging is starting to catch up with him, Kojima implies he's tougher than ever, with many gods calling him the strongest soldier in history, including the many foes who were relative to Snake back in Shadow Moses. He's also fully self-actualized in MGS2, seeing Raiden as weak, and being totally confident he can handle the Metal Gear Rays and Solidus all by himself. Keep in mind that he is typically a humble guy and is a genius fighter and combat analyst, so I think it's fair to grant him these statements. Even by the end of the game, Raiden still hadn't reached Snake's level per the novelizations and the MGS2 comic, which, like I said, Kojima included in the collections for people who didn't want to play the games but still experienced the stories, so he considers them equally valid interpretations of the events. 
with Snake and those bullying Vamp and one-shotting Solidus in a sword fight. Fortune was able to outright beat Snake via her shield tech, with the MGS2 comic conveying that only her weapons can even be touched at all. So it's possible that nearly anyone on the list can't even land a hit on her, and she just stalemates or outlasts almost anyone else at worst, barring mental attacks. And here is where we'd get the foes from MGS4, seeing as they were likely trained to counter Solid Snake by Liquid Ocelot, given their codename, Snake Hound. Plus, the MGS4 database alludes to the fact that they all boast advanced, almost composite versions of the equipment of the prior bosses, while all being connected to the better than VR training SOP system I mentioned earlier. Kojima himself said leading up to the game's release that the bosses of MGS 1 through 4 were all stronger than the last, culminating in MGS 4. While I think in the case of the Cobras, it just contradicts too much of the actual series based on what I've already described, it does hold up in terms of Foxhound vs. Dead Cell and Snakehound vs. the other units though. Vamp by the time of MGS 4 would also be amped by the SOP system, improving his combat skills since MGS 2. He also wears the same exoskeleton tech as the frogs, at least on his legs, with a large portion of striking power in real martial arts coming from such. He was also shown reacting to laughing octopus and piercing her tentacles with his blades, and he's their battlefield commander. Based on foxhound structure, this would mean he has the highest fighting ability among them, with at least one exception based on feats. Raiden by the time of MGS4 would be neck and neck with this version of Vamp, however just a bit below him in my opinion. He was kinda dunking on Raiden in their first fight and nearly killed him, meanwhile Vamp just healed after Afterwards. Even in their second fight, after losing to Snake and having his healing factor suppressed and wanting to die against Raiden, he still had the cyborg dead to rights, with Raiden barely winning by playing possum. Sliding forward to Metal Gear Rising territory, Comsen from the game's Blade Wolf DLC is stated on the website to be the strongest person next to the Winds of Destruction. This would include Raiden's more or less MGS4 style body at the time with Blade Wolf defeating Comson and scaling above them both. For the Winds of Destruction proper, it could just scale linearly in terms of order of bosses faced. Each enemy is sure that they can best Raiden, even with the knowledge that he himself defeated the last boss. With Sam confident that he can at least face a bloodlusted Ripper Mode Raiden, which obviously increases his strength considerably. Ripper Mode is also implied to occur passively dependent on Raiden's bloodlust or anger, with the ninja wanting to take out Sam more than anything. So it's safe to to assume that Sam does indeed pose a threat to Ripper Mode, Raiden. Yet still, Armstrong was able to ultimately beat Sam in a rather pitched fight, and even snap in half the same blade which Raiden used to defeat Jetstream. Raiden with the Mirasama, an on paper stronger blade than what he'd used up until this point, managed to outlast Armstrong while attacking his weak points throughout their fight. And in the top of S tier, we find Solid Snake from the events of MGS4. Yup, Snake over Raiden is still just a better argument. For one, seeing as Rising is officially part of the timeline, statements from Rising regarding events taking place during the Solid games are valid extensions of the lore. Given this, we learn that Jetstream Sam was an active mercenary during the 2000s, the same era was Snake was or would be soon called the strongest soldier in history. So base to base, Snake is stronger and more skilled than Sam. It's also stated on the Platinum Games website, the developers of Rising, that his exoskeleton is akin to Snake's sneaking suit in MGS4, which would be amplifying his own statistics. Keep in mind that Sam is not a cyborg at all. When he pressed Armstrong in his DLC, and even against Ripper Mode Raiden, all he had was a single cyborg arm, meaning it's pretty much just a dude in an exosuit catching strikes from and kicking around likely Ripper Mode upgraded Raiden. And the same could be said about Solid Snake. Supporting this is Raiden saying that Snake is unstoppable, even after losing to the same cyborg arm Sam that scraps with Ripper Mode Raiden later. To say Raiden's being wholly biased here makes zero sense. He's fought beside Snake, was trained to replicate him, experienced the bulk of his missions, and is a combat genius himself. For that to be the case, and for Raiden to make the statement, it just logically follows that Snake would be in there. Snake's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with cyborgs, dudes that can handle nuke-proof mechs exploding on top of him, and was even capable of putting down the same vamp that could beat Raiden. 
multiple times based on codec dialogue, and managed to outskill and overpower the vampire on top of that. It's also stated in MGS2 that sneaking suits are resistant to the effects of the same HF blades sported by Raiden, even the Murasama, with Snake's Octo Camo being an evolved form of an exoskeleton even better than Sam's. Raiden only managed to cut Solidus's suit's weak point, which Snake's does not have. Even decapitations wouldn't work, seeing as Snake has a mask made of the same material as his sneaking suit. So based on scaling, he's strong and fast enough to contend with Ripper Mode Raiden, has the skill to outdo opponents superior to Raiden, with there being no real way to say that he got that much more skilled between MGS4 and Rising, and the tech to counter Raiden's sword. Even ignoring that, he gets the Mantis doll, which just automatically possesses and kills anyone with nanomachines in their bodies, which is almost the entire list. Them's the facts. While Old Snake is obviously much older, the same exoskeleton compared to the Octo Camo made Solid as Snake the physically strongest foe in MGS2, with things like his syringes or even just his raw willpower closing the gap and bypassing his advanced aging. Even after the entire game and walking through a microwave hallway in a damaged sneaking suit, Snake managed to scrap with and beat someone who could dent a battleship more durable than Metal Gears. Speaking of, Liquid Ocelot was able to overpower the same sneaking suit, which would be all but uncuttable by HF blades using Snake's knife, meaning the blade is either built different or Liquid Ocelot is just on some beyond physics power like Armstrong. So your placement of Liquid Ocelot depends on that. Remember how fatigued Snake was when Ocelot lost to him and how Snake didn't have or use any of his equipment against him. So yeah, the two most powerful dudes are some boomers, some Yoda-ish. Well, that's ignoring Screaming Mantis, a member of the beauties from MGS4 actually possessed by Psycho Mantis from MGS1. Snake's weapons were literally useless against her and even after the boss fight, she just ignores all of Snake's attacks, and the actual voice of God has to one-shot her just for Snake to survive. Which means Solid Snake might have like omniscient plot armor, like just in the actual lore of the series, but anyway. The MGS4 relationship guide claims that the sorrow from MGS3 was controlling Mantis for some reason, somehow, so he might just have more like mental power than her or psychic power than Mantis. With all that said, I hope you learned something. Let me know down in the comments any other series you'd like to see analyzed in the future. Thanks for watching.